Hello geometers. A couple of days ago in our unit on geometric solids we encountered this problem which is about modeling um, a water tower and looking at its volume. It says the water tower in the picture below is modeled by the two-dimensional figure beside it. The water tower is composed of a hemisphere, that's the bottom part, a cylinder around the middle, and a cone on top. Let C be the center of the hemisphere and let D be the center of the base of the cone. Okay, so one little random thing I wanted to point out is because we've talked in the middle of our unit on solids, we've talked about cross sections. This two-dimensional figure that they drew for us, which was very nice of them, is the same thing you would get if you sliced this vertically down through the middle. If you sliced it open, this is kind of what it would look like. So you could think of this as a vertical cross section of that water tower. Or another way you could think of it is if you rotated this around the dotted line, if you took this little figure over here and rotated it around the dotted line, it would make this figure. Now, at the big, all the questions associated with this on the back of this page, but the first part pretty much just fills in all the things that we've already filled in on the picture anyway. AC is 8.5 feet, BF is 25 feet, and angle EFD measures 47 degrees. They want me to determine and state to the nearest cubic foot the volume of the water tower. Okay, so there's the information I was just reading. It's already on the figure. I'm supposed to be finding the volume of the water tower. So I've got three pieces here. I've got a cone on top, plus working my way down, I've got a cylinder below that, plus working my way down, I've got a hemisphere, which is just a half of a sphere. Okay, so let's look at the formulas for those things. The formula for a cone's volume is one-third pi r squared times h. This is the area of the base times the height. In this case, the base for a cone is a circle, so that's why pi r squared is there. Cylinder is area of the base times height, where, again, the base is a circle, so it's pi r squared, that's the area of your base, times the height. And a sphere has formula 4 thirds pi r cubed, but remember this isn't a full sphere, it's half a sphere, so I'm going to put a 1 half out front. So this is basically what I'm filling in. Now the cone's height is the first, actually the radius is the first thing I come to here. So first thing I need to look at is, here's what we know about the sphere. Sphere. <laughs> it's from the middle of it, the center of it, to the bottom is 8.5 feet. Well remember that in a sphere, the radius isn't just something that happens from side to side. Like if I draw a sphere, a lot of times, we show the radius by showing what we call a great circle right around the middle. And we say, here's the radius. Well, that's true, but the radius is anywhere from the center to anywhere on the sphere, any direction, forward, backward, anywhere. So in other words, if this is 8.5, that's a radius. So this is 8.5, or this is 8.5. And this up here, DG, has to be the same as CK, so this is 8.5. So the radius of my cone is 8.5 feet. <clears throat> so the radius of the cone is 8.5. That's going to get plugged in there. The height of the cone is the next thing I have to find. This is why they gave me the 47 degrees. I'm going to have to use a right triangle trig function, meaning sine, cosine, or tangent, to figure out the height, which is DE. So let's come down here and look at that. Here's D, here's E, here's 47 degrees. <coughs> excuse me. From D to G is 85. Excuse, it's not 85, excuse me. It's 8.5. Make sure your decimal shows up. So from F to D is also 8.5. Same thing here. So this is 8.5. And if I'm trying to find DE, then I'm working with the side that is opposite from the 47 degree angle and the side that's adjacent. Opposite and adjacent is tangent. Tan of 47 degrees equals the side we need over the side we know. So once I've set that up, I can cross multiply to solve. This is like a proportion where this is over 1. 
8.5 times tan of 47 equals x. Remember, at this point, after you cross multiply, you always ask yourself, is my x alone? If it is, great. You know what to put in the calculator. If it's not, you would keep going until it was. In this case, it is. So I'm going to type, type excuse me, 8.5 times tan 47. Now, just don't forget, it's sometimes a good idea to double check that your calculator is in degrees, especially if you're using a graphing calculator. In a scientific calculator, you can see because it shows you on the screen. It says DEG, they're really tiny. All right, but this is in degrees, 9.1151, etc. So X is 9. Point, I'm just going to go ahead and write as much as I can of that. Or let's just write four dozen. I could write more, but. Okay, now what I'm trying to do with this is I am trying to keep this as not rounded, so to speak, as possible to the end. This says I'm going to the nearest cubic foot. So at the end, I'm going to be rounding to a whole number. But I don't have to start doing that here. If I start doing that right at the beginning, it's going to be way off by the time I get there. So I'm going to round as little as possible along the way. That was the height, remember. That's what I was finding. DE is the height of my cone. All right. The radius of the cylinder is the same as the cone, so this is still 8.5. The radius of the cylinder, I'm assuming the height of the cylinder, we were given, it's 25. Uh, radius of the sphere is the same as the other two radii, 8.5. Okay, so once I plug all of this in, what I have here is, and I used up all my space down here, so I'm going to do it up at the top, one-third pi 8.5 squared times 9.1151. All of that is the volume of the cone, plus pi times 8.5 squared times 25. All of that is the volume of the cylinder. And finally, 1 half times 4 thirds times pi times 8.5 cubed. Don't forget to cube with the sphere. A lot of times people do forget with spheres and they just square it. Okay, so I could either try to put all of this into my calculator at once or I could try to split it up. I could go ahead and calculate this, write it down, calculate this, write it down, calculate this, write it down, and add. Um, I'm going to put it all in, but let me just point out to you, the more you have to put in your calculator at once, the more careful you have to be that you put it in correctly. So for instance, I'm going to make sure the calculator knows all of this needs to be multiplied together before I do any addition. So I'm going to put it all in parentheses. So I'm going to do one third, and I'm using the fraction button here because just because it makes it a little bit easier to see, times pi times 8.5 squared times 9.1151. Okay, all of that was the cone plus Sorry that you can't see through the glare, sorry. I was thinking it was perfect, but then I moved it. Now I've got to do these, again in parentheses. Pi, always use the pi button, plus 8.5 squared, I mean, excuse me, not plus, times, did I write plus? No, times 25. Close that parentheses out, that's basically this part, plus parentheses, 1 half times 4 thirds times pi times 8.5 cubed, parentheses closed. And I get 7650.37. 7650.37. I'm going to go ahead and turn over my paper to where they asked me to do it. And they said, do it to the nearest cubic foot. So 7650. 0.37 just rounds to 0, 0.0, or 7,650 cubic feet. <clears throat> now, it says the water tower was constructed to hold a maximum of 400,000 pounds of water. If water weighs 64, excuse me, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, per means for each. So 62.4 pounds for each cubic foot. 
Can the water tower be filled to 85% of its volume and not exceed the weight limit? There's a lot of ways we could approach this. Here is what I did. Anaya Grimes, please come to the main office. Anaya Grimes, please come to the main office, room A suit. Enjoy that announcement. Okay. I looked at it and said, okay, 85% of its volume, I'm going to figure that out first. I'm going to figure out what that is by doing 7650 times 0.85. 7650 times 0.85. 85% of its volume is 6502.5. Okay, we want to know if it can be filled with this much in terms of volume, this much water and not be too heavy. Well, that's the number of cubic feet. If I know that each one of those weighs 62.4 pounds, I'm gonna multiply times 62.4 pounds and figure out how many pounds that is going to weigh. So 6502.5 times 62.4, and this is the weight of the amount of water that would be in there if it is filled to 85% of its capacity. Oops, now what did I do? I wrote cubic feet, is that cubic feet? No, that's pounds. Okay, so could it not exceed the weight limit? What was the weight limit? The weight limit was 400,000 pounds. We are definitely greater than 400,000 pounds. So I would say no, this number is greater than 400,000. And that would be my answer. Let me point out to you the units, how the units work here. We multiply feet cubed, which if it's not in a fraction, we just say that's over one, times the 62.4 we were given was pounds per cubic foot. Per means divided by or over, basically. Pounds per cubic foot. So this is how I know that I end up with pounds. And we could make it plural. That might make more sense. And that is the end of the problem. Hope you enjoyed.